Amen. So Exodus chapter 4. Where there say amen. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord had not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thy hand? And he said, A rod. <clears throat> and he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent, and Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thy hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand, that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath appeared unto thee. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thy hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put thy hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again, and plucked it out of his bosom, and behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither akin to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither akin unto thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river, and pour it upon the dry land and the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land and Moses said unto the Lord O my Lord I am not eloquent neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servants but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue and the Lord said unto him who hath made man's mouth or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seen, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O oh my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him, and put words in his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth, and with his mouth. And will teach you what ye shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman, unto the people and it shall be even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth and thou shalt be to him instead of God and thou shalt take this rod in thy hand wherewith thou shalt do signs and Moses went and returned to Jethro his father-in-law and said unto him let me go I pray thee and return unto my brethren which are in Egypt, and see whether they be yet alive. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. And the Lord said unto Moses in Midian, Go, return into Egypt, for all the men that are dead, which sought thy life. And Moses took his wife and his sons, and set them upon an ass, and he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand, and the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thy hand, but I will harden his heart, that he shall not let the people go. 
And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my firstborn, even is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, Let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. And it came to pass, by the way in the hymn, that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the first skin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, Surely a bloody husband hath thou to me. So he let him go. Then she said, A bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision. And the Lord said to Haran, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. And he went and met him in the mount of God and kissed him. And Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord who had sent him and all the signs which he had commanded him. And Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. And Aaron spake all the words which the Lord had spoken unto Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people. And the people believed. And when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel and that he had looked upon their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his holy word. God bless you. You may be seated. <clears throat> Once again, we welcome ourselves into the house of the Lord. Amen. Last week, we started on uh, with Exodus chapter 3. And uh, <clears throat> we told us it will cut across chapter 4 down to chapter 5 till the plagues began. And uh, after which, there will be a mighty deliverance of God's people. And uh, we told us that from Exodus chapter 3, God began to reveal the plan of redemption because Exodus itself it's redemption amen and uh, like we told us we told us it's a major redemption and the prophet said God does not entrust that kind of a major thing into the hands of anyone he does it by himself. And uh, we were looking at all the two exoduses and bringing it to our day in order to understand what is happening, what has happened, and what will happen in our day. Because in the scriptures, we've already had two exoduses. And uh, the third one is on. The reason we are looking at this very first one is because you know, the prophet said, the last day will vindicate the first day. Yeah. Amen. So, the first exodus was the planting exodus. And uh, if you make a planting, uh, in the planting season, you wait till the harvest. Is that right? Yeah. But in the harvest, what you planted is what you are going to reap but in several folds. Nobody plant one seed of corn and during harvest you get one seed of corn. If that is all you will get, there is no need to go through the planting exercise. The excess of planting is for one to go down so that many could come from it. Are you catching it? That was why Jesus our Lord said except the seed of corn is planted buried, died, rotten it will do what? It will abide alone. It will always be one seed. But God wanted many messiahs. He wanted many Jesus Christ. <laughs> God wanted many gods. If it's flying over your head, just concede to me that I'm preaching the scripture. 
There was a time the Greek, I told you that about that already. They said they want to see Jesus. They've been attempting to see Jesus maybe several times over. They were blocked. But this particular day, it was an unusual one. Even those who attended to them realized that if they don't do something today, there might be a problem. So they began to pass their request. He said, Philip, tell it Andrew. Andrew went to meet the master. When the master urged that the Gentiles were bent on seeing him, knowing that by his ministry then, it was not meant to deal with the Gentiles. I hope you realize that. There were statements that our Lord made even to the disciples as a commandment, go not in the way of the Gentiles. Not because he didn't love the Gentiles, but the Gentiles had the appointed season. The vision is for an appointed time. Amen. God works according to his plan. God works according to his program. And that is why I'm taking time to show to you the plan of the Exodus. Which he started unfolding by himself in Exodus chapter 3. So, when Jesus asked their insistence to see him, he said, ah, the hour has what? Come. The answer of Jesus needed revelation to decode. Because what has we want to see you got to do with the hour has come. But you see, really, for the Gentiles to see Jesus, the hour must come. Meaning that all the while, that wasn't their hour. Amen. But when they are insisting, their insistence is drawing near the hour. But he made a statement. Except a cone of wheat. He was referring to himself. <laughs> Amen. In other words, except I die, I'm buried, and I resurrected, I will not be able to bring what the Gentiles wanted. Jesus was answering them that they will see Jesus but not in my body. Are you catching it? The Gentiles will see Jesus in a many membered. Mm. So they must see Jesus by you. For us to see Jesus physically, there must be rapture. But yet before then, Jesus will be seen. Because the Gentiles wanted to see Jesus. He didn't make Jesus come out to see them. Are you seeing the power of his plan? He never, there was no record that he came out to address them. But he, show, he showed out the plan of how Jesus will be seen by the Gentiles. Amen. There have been Gentiles who were really radical. The prophet said in God's providence, even though the gospel is meant for the Gentiles now, it said in God's providence, there were certain Jews that were meant to come into God's program at the era of the Gentiles. And so will certain Gentiles come into God's program at the era of the Jews. Like the people like the Syrophoenician woman. She wasn't a Jewish woman, but she got what she wanted because of her insistence. But time will come when the Gentiles will have their blessings en masse. And I want to announce that that time has come and is already even fading away. I will connect it for you with this exodus we are sharing. That time has come and is already what? Fading away. That is why today everything Jesus did has been done again. But can I say this without sacrilege? Where Jesus did one, two was given. Where he did four, eight was given. In these last days, for the Gentiles, because that scripture must be fulfilled that except the corn of wheat die and buried and become quickened, he will abide only by himself. 
but for the corn not to abide by himself in order what to bring many more of himself there must be that process so did jesus died was he buried did he resurrect then he must bring many more of himself And that is how the Gentile will see Jesus. And this is why in these last days, for there to be an exodus, Jesus must come down. We established that last Sunday. Because in Exodus chapter 3, he said, I am what? I am come down. I have heard the cries of my people. And I'm done what? And I'm come down. He came down. In the second exodus, he also came down. He came in flesh. But for the continuity of that exodus, he appeared in his form again. Because the church of Christ became more visible and effective after Jesus left. Am I preaching the scripture? What was the church able to do when Jesus was with them? He said when the bridegroom he said, when the master is with them, amen, they shouldn't worry much. It was their defense. They didn't even have to fast. They didn't even have to do anything. He said, but time will come. When after Jesus died and buried and he started replicating himself, do you realize that? Oh, church, I hope you are spiritual. Because you must get the plan. Do you realize that after Jesus finished, before he died, the church he gathered together could not stand to defend his gospel? Am I quoting the scripture? Smite the shepherd and the sheep will watch. Jesus actually told them that despite that you have followed me all this while, all of you will be offended about me tonight. And there was one who said, "Ah, uh-uh. even if everybody will be offended, uh-uh. Jesus, isolate me. Though all men, somebody said that in the Bible. Can I have the person? Ah, you are reading your Bible, brother Piro, brother Peter himself. He probably will look at brother Thomas and say, if people like this brethren, without mentioning him." Is the one you are referring to. It is excusable. But to talk about brother Peter the Rock himself. (laughs) And Jesus looked at me. Is that you? Before the cock crow twice, you will deny me. He said, though all men deny you, you will deny me three times. He said, though all men deny you, yet I will not. These were the believers that Jesus brought up in the three and a half years ministry. So unstable. So unsure. Brother Isaiah, that's the truth. Without revelation. (laughs) Because the plan, the program must be true. Jesus does not make loose statements. Until this happened, I cannot replicate. That was why he told Peter before he left, he said, when thou art converted, isn't that an embarrassment? Somebody slept by Jesus' side. He ate Jesus' hand. He ate with him in the same pot. And he's still being told, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Uh Uh-uh. You mean all these three and a half years no conversion? Yes, no conversion. So the summary of the ministry before his death, burial, and resurrection was a gathering of unconverted bunch. I'm preaching the scriptures. So it is not gathering around his personality that gives you life. I wore his coat in Sabino Kayan. I stood on Sunset Mountain with him. Believers, they know what I'm saying now. Those are our values, isn't it? 
In fact, I, I ate the molars. I, I baptized my I baptized my what do you call it? With molasses. I drench it like Brother Brown will do it. It doesn't give you life. Some of these things are imitations. Some of these are pure imitations. Amen. And it's the same thing. These were guys who had gone out, who had prayed, who had come back and said, look, even demons were subject to us. They were only living off of the benefit of his presence. No conversion. No inward testimony of the new birth. So don't gather around relics. Let's go beyond relics. The relics are good. I've enjoyed my trips around those wonderful sites. Sunset Mountain, Sabino Kion, South Mountain, this one, all those things. God has been gracious to me to see most all of them. But that is still not life. I'm talking of those who slept. They must have shared bed sometimes with Jesus Christ. And it didn't mean life. Because that was not the program. <laughs> the program was before there could be me. There must be this. It is this process that will replicate me. But watch. After that resurrection, he appeared unto them. Is that right? He said, go to the upper room. What they were to take in the upper room could not have been given as long as Jesus was there. Did you catch that? That is why he said, as much as you treasure my presence, it is expedient for me to go. You are only being tempted by my atmosphere. It is my horror, the horror of Christ that makes you mellow. Amen. That is why when some of you get out of that range, you become something else. The horror, the atmosphere mellows you down. Once you are not in that environment, your life is unpredictable. That is not Christianity. Are you catching it? So this is why I said it is expedient. What is expedient is necessary without alternative. This must happen. So it is to your benefit that I go. Because if I do not go, I cannot replicate my life in all of you. And that life claim like a cloven tongues of fire on the day of Pentecost. Is that right, church? Now watch the people who have played cowardice. Watch Peter. Who swore under oath denying Christ? He even did it before a little girl. The Bible said a damsel, maybe a young lady. Ah, Papa, you are in the tabernacle. You need glasses. I don't know if short sightedness or long sightedness is your problem. Some of you lack respect. He must have intimidated the girl to submission. And maybe the girl even apologized. Uh, Papa, sorry, I taught you, but, but you look. Then another person said, even if you are not the one, your speech is betraying you. Keep quiet there. Don't you have respect for elderly men? Three times. Thus said the Lord can never fail. Amen. Church, when he did it the third time, read your Bible. Even though our Lord was in the midst of crowds, under tensions and punishments, my Bible told me, yet he knew the positions, the location of everybody. He knows your location this morning. He knows the location of your heart. He knows your thoughts. He knows your heart desires. The Bible said from where he was before the pilot, he turned and his face met with Peter. How did he know where Peter was? Come on, church. And that face-to-face -face look reminded Peter 
In other words, I told you, does yet me. Do you know it is us that we say does yet? Jesus never said does yet. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you. That is more than any prophet. That was the God prophet and is still the God prophet. Glory to God. And the Bible says, and Peter remembered. This was the climax of the production of the church that lived by the presence, atmosphere of Christ. Are you catching it? But on that day of Pentecost, after the Spirit came in, see many Jesuses in action. <laughs> My Bible told me three of them were going and they, to the temple to worship. And they came to the gate beautiful. And there was a man who was in expectation. Church, be in expectation. The quality of your expectation notwithstanding. I repeat again, it is not the quality of expectation that God works with. It is the faith behind the expectation. Because God knew and he still knows that you cannot be expecting if you do not have faith. Sometimes your expectation may be skewed. Like Naaman was expecting it, things to be done this way. God didn't bother about that. God was concerned with the faith that made Naaman to get up from Syria and travel down to Israel with the belief that he would get healed. That somehow, whatever happened, that was what God was concerned with. And that is what he's still concerned with. If you have faith, even if you ask a miss, the spirit of the Lord is your advocate. You can coach me anywhere. He will rearrange it for you. Do you know the Bible said we don't even know how to pray? It is the spirit of the Lord that does what? Intercede for us with groanings that cannot be halted. You love him, friends. So this man was expecting, he was probably expecting some few some few naira for the Americans here this morning, some few dollars. He said dollars. <laughs> Maybe five, ten or whatever. Just something to keep him going for the next meal or two. All he was looking for was a temporary relief. But here we are Athens vessels who we are carrying his permanent solution. They said, look on us. Silver and gold we don't have, but such as we have. Come on, church. They have received something. They have become little Jesuses. They said, such as we have, we give unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. And some folks had problem with that. It will be a permanent problem. Because we are not going to accept Trinity name. Our inheritance is the name of Jesus Christ. You will see why this morning if we are able to get there. Because the name of Jesus is connected to Exodus 4. Mm. You will see why this morning. And some people gathered and said, ah, come, come, come. You are under arrest. In what name? And by what power? Why were they so interested? You know what the Bible said? It said that a notable miracle has been done. Cannot be denied. This was not an arrangement. This was not bribing somebody to be holding his hand like this and say, I say, stretch it. And he will stretch it. And in another place, the same person is stretching for another pastor. What a dumb game. This was real. The high priest knew, he, knew him. The priest knew the man. All the worshippers knew him. The whole, that is why the Bible said the old Jerusalem was moved. 
So a notable miracle has been done. By what name and by what authority? Jesus, Peter said, the man who denied Christ yesterday, before what you may call ordinary men, the Bible said he stood before the councils and they said, we are not careful. In all our world, we are not afraid. There is no reservation. We will tell our mind. We are not careful to tell you. We are not scared to tell you by what name we did this. We will tell you because you ask. In the name of Jesus Christ, whom you crucified. They crucified him. Amen. He said, whom you crucified and whom the Lord raised. Faith in his name. (laughs) Faith in his name has given this man soundness. So deal with that. I said, I said, stay in Yoruba. What do you think about that? They brought them back. Okay, we want to tell you. Don't mention that name again. Peter said, get your reply. Judge it by yourself. Are you seeing a different man? Isn't the scripture fulfilling? Except the corn of which. <laughs> he went into the ground. He has not replicated himself. Many Jesuses are on the ground today. That is what the Gentiles will see. You are one of them. I am one of them. We are the one they will see. We represent the final revelation. Jesus himself was the fullest revelation of Godhead. But we are the final revelation. For this final hour. Is that some people under their messenger? Come on, church, will be the final voice. So they must hear me. They must listen to you, whether they like it or not. From the spirit realm to the physical realm, forces of darkness must listen. They must hear it. I will not be careful to respond. It is the name of the Lord Jesus. You love him. Okay, let's keep going. However far we go. Here is the plan again unfolding. It came down indeed. And the discussion between God and Moses on the Exodus plan started in Exodus 3 and they are still talking in Exodus 4. I won't be able to go through everything we did in their plan last Sunday. Amen. I think they recorded it. Whoever is interested could go listen. Amen. Because we need to move a bit forward this morning. So, after God has revealed the plan of what he was going to do in Egypt to the point of compensating his people, everything that happened in that Exodus, there was nothing accidental. We read in Exodus chapter 3 together how God, you know, lined it case by case, step by step. He said, you will do this, but Pharaoh will do this. You will do this, but Pharaoh will do this. But when that deliverance is finally ready, my children will go to their neighbors, Egyptian neighbors, and ask, give me this, give me that. I'm borrowing it. A borrowing that will never be paid back. Because even the Egyptians knew that these people are not going to return. And they are using the word borrow. And they will say, I lent it to him. Is it not people you are expecting a return from that you will lend something to? But these guys won't pay you back. Because they have paid. And I told you by that, if anyone is despitefully using you, don't worry. God is a diligent rewarder. You will get paid back. God will, God will make it up to you. Then after he dealt with the plan on one side, on the activities, he's focusing on the messenger now. Because precept must be upon precept. Everything must be ready. The plan had been revealed, and I told you, Moses was the earthen vessel. 
in whom was deposited the Exodus redemption plan of the first Exodus. Even though God came down, remember, Pharaoh never saw God. But he saw God. <laughs> Amen. Is that who is that God? If he had revelation, that God was standing before him. What destroyed Pharaoh was that it took everything Moses said as Moses' word. And this is what we destroy this generation. Amen. It wasn't Williams Bram's word. It is God's word deposited in an earthen vessel. <laughs> they did that Jeremiah gave Baruch that there will be redemption in this land is exactly what is taking place. William Bram will not be the God to worship. But he brought God to you in these last days. The ministry he brought to you was the reincarnated. Don't be afraid to use that word. Reincarnation of Jesus' ministry. Meaning the exact same ministry. Because the Gentiles must see Christ. It wasn't his person. But you see, the problem in every Exodus, I told you last time, is the inability to see beyond the veil. Do you know Moses never said anything? He never did anything except what God told him to do. Even to the things he would tell Pharaoh, let my people go. It wasn't the idea, the words, the phrase of Moses. It was God who told him, when you get before him, you will say, let my people go. So if he thought Moses meant himself, he will, he will return, he will withdraw. <laughs> Did you catch it? But at that time, Moses was standing to speak the mind of God. Church, we have the mind of Christ. This is why we will come to a point we will not be praying to a Jesus. Ah, they didn't catch that. The prophet said, now we pray. Time is coming, we will just speak. I give it to you. It's thus here the Lord. They are promises that will never fail. Because the Christ that is being formed in us will come to full growth. Full stature. Full character. Full perfection. To know what to do with the gift of God. And not misuse it. This is why you are here this morning. To lay in the presence of the SON. So that all the greenness of our life will be baked out. Until we become love. God on two feet. You love him, church. Okay? So, the Lord looked at the messenger. He has given him everything he needs to say. He said, but for you to do this job, I'm going to give you two signs. This last exodus also, the messenger was given two signs. And they were definite signs. Now, in the first exodus, the signs that were given, God was so definite about it, until he said, when you go before Pharaoh, and he asks for your authority, show him that. If he does not believe the voice of the first sign, he will take the second one. And if he rejects all the signs, he's working for judgment. This is the reason this age is working for judgment. And the sixth seal has been opened all along. And the judgment has been falling. COVID was the recent judgment. You said no. I said yes. 
Brother Bram said every pandemic and every epidemic they were loosed under the six seals. The six seal has been with us. Amen. The bubonic plagues and all kind of plagues that have beset this earth, even to the wars that has decimated mankind, the Holocaust and everything under the six seal. And the great tribulation under the six seal. Anything judgment is under the six seal. Are you catching it? So it's on all the time. Amen. So, but watch something about these two signs. After God had conversation with Moses, Moses began to show his inability. The prophet said, the man who is always eager to do the job is actually not called in many instances. He said, it is that one that is always hiding that is demonstrating the symptoms of call by election. Moses was explaining to God his inadequacy. And God bypassed the explanation first. Your inadequacy or otherwise <laughs> will never change anything with God. If God is determined to use you, I say it again. He does not have a plan B. No matter what it takes, it will bring you back to that program. Moses said, I'm not eloquent. We know it was a stammerer. God said, that's fine. Say another thing. Then the Lord went further. Ignoring his weakness. Say, so what is that in thy hand? <laughs> We're going to learn two things from here. What is that in your hand? A rod. This rod was ordinary rod. Which, you, which he, passed, he paved way for himself. Maybe through the grass or push, you know, try to keep all his uh, cattle in line. Ordinary rod. Like you will see within the hands of uh, eight men. I told you, no matter how much you hate, that was eight men today. You are central generation of believers are eight men. <laughs> Abraham was eight men. Jacob was eight men. Isaac was X-Men. So we won't do without X-Men. You are children of X-Men. Even Jesus our Lord was an X-Men. Because he was the shepherd of the sheepfold. How about that now? Alright, they are just trying to paint that good name a bad name. But we have nice generation behind X-Men. Alright. So he took that, he said, Rod. And God said, drop that rod and see what happened he dropped the rod he turned to snake he almost ran God said come pick it that is the first sign brother Bram said when he dropped the rod he actually handed that rod over to God it was the rod of Moses before it was dropped after it was dropped it became the rod of God are you catching it and you will never know the importance of that rod until you go to Egypt you travel back with Moses to Egypt you will see what that rod did God actually told Moses we ran together he said, wherever you go, take that rod with you. Because it is by that rod you will show my signs and wonders in the land that you are going. It became a rod of deliverance to Israel and it became a rod of judgment to Egypt. The same rod. Are we together? 
And the prophet said, we can learn a lesson here that whatever you have, if it's handed over to God, will do more for you in your life than you realize. Amen. Amen. There was a small boy one day who had five loaves and two fishes. Maybe the mother just, the meetings may be late, just have something. What the boy had was only sufficient for him. But when he handed it over to God, it fed 5,000. And there were still remnants. Amen. There was a widow woman one day who had problems of debt. How many remember her? And that creditors were coming to take her children. And he went to the prophet. And the prophet said, what do you have? I told some of us who are fantasizing about wealth. I said, God does not bless over nothing. You must have something to present. God is not a get rich by night person. You must have something to present. What is you have? What is in your hands? If you are going to school, study properly. Get something real out of it. We are not saying that is what will bring you blessings. But you have, you have gotten a foundation that God could stand upon to bless your life. Lord, this is what I have. It doesn't bless over nothing. God does not do his business haphazardly. And God is not a lazy man. If you are not schooling, you are learning a trade. Learn it properly. Brother Bram said, in whatever you are doing, Amen. be the best in it. Amen. Give yourself to what you are doing, Amen. and the Lord will bless you on it, Amen. and he will bless you by it. Amen. You must have something to present. Amen. This is why God hates gambling. I might as well say it. Did you hear me? God hates gambling. The prophet of the Lord spoke out on gambling. The devil has made it easy for many. I hope there are no gamblers here. If you are here, you will repent this morning. Because you are an hindrance. It used to be that people will watch to be sure nobody is looking at them before they enter pool house. But today they don't need it. Satan is getting smarter. If I tell some of you to submit your phones this morning for examination, I hope my eyes will not be blinded by several apps of gamblers. Naira bet, Naira bet, and all kind of bet. He has made sin so easy and so adaptable. All you need to do is to be in the corner of your bed or even at, the, at your table at work and say, I just want to relax with something. You don't relax with singing. Hymns unto the Lord. You are not relaxing with the spoken word message or the Bible. I have scripture for that. He said, is any happy? Let him sing what? The scripture tells us how to relax. And now to recreate. But for every genuine thing, Satan will give you an impersonation. What you are relaxing with is with the downloaded app of gamblers. The Lord knows your house address. They can't say amen. Whether you say amen or you don't say amen, gamblers will not make it, they will not go to heaven. Even if you make two million dollars, don't come and pay the tithe here. Did you hear me? And I mean it. We don't want wages of iniquity.
plus the tithe plus it, eat it together. Or go and give it to whoever it's convenient for. Because God hates gambling. When you see some of them losing money constantly, even as wives, it's not leaving anybody out. Both men and women, even children. Because it's just by haps. 500 Naira recharge card, data, will give you a download of several apps. It's just apps. Say, I don't, I'm, I'm just putting a 9,000. You could have helped, you could have impacted a life with that 99,000. Instead of giving it to those who are already rich. Using your money to buy stadiums, to buy football clubs, to buy Rolls Royce. They will take the money to, where is that you people's shop? They will take your money to Polo. To go and use it to buy 120 million wristwatches. That is what they are using your money for the owners of gambling shops Naira Bet and the rest of them how do you pray for success about such business do you pray about it Lord this gambling I want to play let me succeed you are laughing if you ever pray who do you pray to I'm saying even if you are making money from it Satan is giving you that money God is not a gambler. Yes, what God genuinely rewards is hard work. Yes. That is why he said the sleep of a real laborer is very sweet. Yes. What do you have to present? Brother Bram said, God does not do his work haphazardly. Neither does he expect his children to be afasad about anything. That is why whatever you are doing, learn the skill set properly. So that you can excel. If you are a carpenter, be the best of the carpenters. If you go to God for wisdom, he will give you. I can show you in the scriptures. We shall get to it. When they were to build the tabernacle, God told Moses, when we come to the cloud redemption of Exodus, you will see that. God told Moses, he said, I have selected two men for you, in whom I have deposited wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and skill to engrave this, to do this and that. If it remained wisdom for you to do your job, ask from God, as long as what you are doing is legitimate, you will release it. And if you are faithful, you will excel. There is sowing time. There is cultivating time. There is nurturing time. Then there will be harvest. That is the wealth that lasts. That is the wealth you don't look bad that does not pick your conscience. May God give you understanding. The Bible said if you are desperate to be rich, you will be corrupt. And corruption is on your phones. Corruption is on your doors. Corruption is on the billboard. It's everywhere. They don't like this kind of gospel. But real righteous people love it. God bless you. Whatever you present, it will bless. Yeah. Moses presented his rod. Listen to me. The moment he handed it over, Brother Bram said, it was no more an ordinary rod. It became the rod of God. This is why Christians will be Christians in their profession. Are you catching it? Christian accountants, Christian engineers, Christian this anything that the beauty of your confession cannot reflect upon don't do it that is why it is not every profession you can do because it is not every profession that is Christianly <laughs> he handed it over to God and God said now the next thing 
this rod is no longer yours it has become mine the man who will undo it must be cleansed you cannot undo the gift of God with what? with a corrupt hand you cannot do it with a corrupt heart with the filthy personality it will defeat your confession if you are a preacher you must have the life behind your preaching the prophet says stop preaching it as long as you cannot live its life the preacher is called to preach his gospel and to live it you are called to hear the gospel and to live it if the man who is preaching cannot live it he should stop preaching it because instead of being a blessing to the kingdom he's becoming a liability the hands that carries the rod of God must be clean Amen. Amen. Let me tell you, all of us are called of God. <laughs> Did you hear me? Amen. All of us are called of God. If we all are called of God, we carry a gift of God. Then we must be clean. Amen. Now I'm coming home. The prophet said, What that rod was in the hand of Moses is what the name of Jesus is in the mouth of the believer. This is where it is connecting you and I now. When Moses was here, he does not have the revelation of that name as to say in the name of Jesus, yet he served that Jesus. Because according to Hebrews 11, it was a reproach of Christ that he esteemed as the greater riches. Is that right? But the revelation of that name came to us in this generation or was restored to us. Now what, rod, what that rod was in the hand of Moses is what the name of Jesus is in the mouth of the believer. Then those who carry the name of Jesus in their mouth must not carry it in vain. Vanity is professing that name and living contrary to that name. Yeah. That is the vanity of that name. Because you see, when you name the name of Christ, the eyes of the world are trained to look at you. Even people of other religion, they look at you the more closely. In submission to the fact that they are really in their own religion, they are not expecting much from themselves. But in Christianity, they are expecting more. I've never seen anybody who misbehaved and they say, and you call yourself a traditionalist or a Muslim. Did you ever hear that? But how many times have you heard, and you call yourself a aha. We show that even other religion admit that to live above board, you have to be a Christian. A former Muslim is just confirming that to me here. Amen. Praise God, hallelujah. Amen. Are you catching it? Amen. So where and that means that is the greatest identity you can carry. Amen. I'm a Christian. I don't live like this. Amen. Is that right? Amen. And people will watch you the more closer. Is a Christian. Do you know if you live right, there are conversations they won't have around you. Amen. I know that by experience. Bro, Joseph was telling you the other day here. Amen. You know, when he was talking about pilot's joke, I said all of them are drivers. Whether air driver, ship driver, sailor, or road driver, Agbero is still... It's just that some are more corporate than the other. Sorry if you are a pilot. You are, Sam is preparing to be a pilot. You are a refined driver too. You are driving in the air. Someone is driving on the rail. And another is driving on the road. Another is driving over the waters. Means of transportation. I said, but the spirit is the same. The prophet said, sailors joke. It's all vulgar that you can't listen to them. The things they joke about, they are too obscene. And so are so many of the pilots. 
How about the road drivers? Not to talk of locomotive drivers. But around a Christian, they compose them, comport themselves. Because wherever a believer is, you master that circumstance. If sinners are very comfortable around you, you have come to their level. No, I'm telling you the truth. This is why the scripture said, let your moderation be known to for the time is at hand. People are not afraid to tell who they are today. I'm a gay. And they say it openly. Should I be afraid to say I'm a Christian? Should I be afraid to say I'm a believer? Amen. Should I be afraid to say the well they call heresy? That is the way I worship the God of my fathers. I will dress like that. I will talk like that. I will act like that. I will react like that. And I will never be ashamed. You love him, church? Those who name the name of the Lord must depart from what? Iniquity. Don't hold that name in vain. The name will answer to you if there is a life behind it. Hallelujah. What that rod was is what the name of Jesus Christ is. The prophet said, if Egypt understood, they would have seized that rod from Moses. <laughs> if they succeed in taking the rod, they will whip Moses. Purple, blue, and black. <laughs> But they never had understanding. And today, if they understand, they will take the name of Jesus from us. But they cannot take it. Amen. Amen. David said, you come against me with this, that, and the other. But I come against you in what? In the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong, the righteous run, and he is saved. Wherever you go, take the name of Jesus with you. When temptations around you gather, breathe. Express it. Speak that holy name in prayer. It must answer back to you. Through faith in that name, we shall defeat all our foes. Peter said, faith in that name gave soundness to this man and faith in that name will give soundness to any man we give healing to any man we give deliverance to any man take the name of Jesus with you what is that in your hands today we have the name of Jesus but the hands that carry that name must not be leprous Leprosy is a type of sin. Amen. We must not be living in sin. If your life is not right, come to God. He still changes men in that name. If your testimony is up and down, come to God. He still gives stable testimony because you must not carry that name in vain. The prophet said, you are not a Christian on Sunday and something else Monday to Friday. So if you are like that, you are taking that name in vain. You are not a Christian at home and something else in the campus. If you are like that, you are taking the name in vain. We are the generation of those who know the name. Hallelujah. The name is not Father. It's not Son. It's not the Holy Ghost. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other name given under heaven among men whereby we can be saved than the name Jesus Christ. This is why in everything we do, we do it in that name. It's our rod of deliverance. We wait in that name. We baptize in that name. 
we dedicate in that name. Hallelujah. We bless our food in that name. We go out by that name. We will never leave it behind. Moses never left his rod behind. Wherever we are, we are the identity of that name. Amen. When Moses handed that rod over, it became the rod of God. And God said, told him, go with these two signs. If they do not believe the voice of the first, they will believe the voice of the second. If they do not accept the two voices, then they are ready for judgment. Let me close with this. In this third exodus, it is the same thing. When God called his messenger to send him to the peoples, did you hear my word? Peoples, different languages, tribes, and all kinds of the world. He gave him also two signs. Because the last days must vindicate the first day. I was not in the first exodus. But you know what? I understood everything that happened there by my exodus. That is why the Bible is a book of life. Everything that happened in the first exodus, I understand it today by my exodus. We are still talking of the discussion between the Lord who came down. I showed you the form he came down last week, isn't I? He came in the form of what? The pillar of fire. We talked about the pillar of fire already. Amen. And in his coming down, he's still having this conversation. He said, I will give you two signs to the people you are meant to deliver. So, these signs are meant to be accepted whether you believe or you don't believe. The essence of the sign was for Egypt to be sober and for Israel to gain confidence in the ministry that is to redeem them. Are you catching it? That is why when God spoke to the prophet coming down as a pillar of fire he said I will give you two signs to the peoples of the world regardless of race, creed or doctrine. One sign in the hand. You must understand the plan and you must know why these things were done. He said, you will hold people in their hands and uh, after a while you will feel a vibration if there is sickness in their body or a disease. And your finger will swell in vibration. If that swelling goes down, pronounce them ill. If the swelling did not go down, just say a blessing and leave them alone. They will not be cured of that condition. And he told him, he said, as you continue faithfully it must be a faithful work it must be a devoted work even if your job is secular be faithful be devoted the Lord will reward it he said in your faithful work it will come to a time that I will step it up for you and what will be the stepping up it will come to a time that you will be able to tell the secrets of the heart and the prophet chuckled. He said, Dad? He said, yes. He said, do you know the scripture says the thoughts of men ring louder in heaven than even their voices. So whatever any man is thinking at a particular time, amen? Whatever he plans to do, whatever he keeps in the inner recess of his heart, I will expose them to you and you will speak it out. Two signs. And for the prophet to carry those two signs, he also was purged. Because these signs can actually destroy him if he was not purged and given character for it. Do you know what character is? Let me give you an idea of what character is. If I have power, Brother George, please stand up. Or Brother Dan, anyone. If I have power, to turn this man to a cat. 
Are you listening to me? I have power to turn him to cut or anything. Or even to tell him to go out of existence. And uh, I also have power to know the secrets of the art of this man. Are you following me? And one day I was, I'm passing by and I stopped and looked at Brother George. And in his heart, he was saying that if I could just get a catapult or a gun now, as this man moved, I would just shoot him. I want him dead. And I saw everything. And I fell and I refused to use my power to turn him to something else. That's character. And you know, instead, I turned to Brother George and said, Brother George, change your thoughts. Amen. You all that drive, begin to test it. When somebody drives rough, or how do you call it, at you, see what your next reaction is. Some of us, we chase after him. You know what you are trying to do? You are trying to retaliate. You are not yet inside. I'm not saying you are a bad guy, but you are still growing. You are not yet in the level that God can entrust you with the kind of power I've just spoken about. Because if you entrust, and some of you, when you are oppressed a bit, and you wish you were a soldier for a moment, say, I will laugh. How many ever felt that way? I felt that way before. <laughs> Honest confession is good for the soul. I'm confessing my own. Oh, yes. I felt that way before, but I no longer feel that way now. I said, ah! I must have even expressed it in the past. Okay. These are the good, this is the kind of time to be a soldier. So I will bundle this guy to Barak. He will know how far. Oh, yeah, it's the man who wants the power of spoken word. So some of us, if we get that power, we'll turn many people to cats right in the church. And they're supposed to be your brothers. When you realize they come back as a brother. But don't do that again. You have failed. Didn't Jesus have the power to command legions? Did he not say so? But he did do it. Before God can entrust you, he must trust you. Some of us cannot undo simple things without getting violent. You can't undo simple things without raising voices and fighting until somebody who's come with it. I think we should stop the discussion. You are not yet in it. Power without character will work for the devil. But power with character is fit to rule. There were many times the prophet saw people who were saying, God bless you. And he told people, he said, if, you, if I tell you what God, God is actually thinking about me in his heart, you will run. And he has to deal with it. He still must not betray any emotion. And he still has to love that person. Did you hear me? I say he still has to do what? The prophet said the test of your love is to still love that man that you know if he has his chance, he will kill you right there. It's a quotation. Yes, sir. You are talking of perfect love. That capstone love. I say we go through the stature of a perfect man sometime. Then you will know the virtue to accept. Because according to that study, to that message, the prophet will say, if yours is like this, then accept it. Meaning that all your virtue claim must go through the quality assurance process of God. He told us there are people who don't pretend to be Christians and they exhibit certain amount of it. Oh yes. Some of them can give their bodies to be burned. To be burned, so some of you cannot do it. But guys out there, they can die for certain causes so that their people can be liberated. It's just that their sacrifice will not be accepted for redemption. 
but they can die for their people. That's why, that's why Apostle Paul said, though I give my body to be burnt, but still don't have this. You see, I'm doing all this, I still don't have this. Yes! Because the love God is talking about is defined differently. The way that love can be shared abroad in your heart, the Bible said is by the Holy Ghost. The way you can grow to it is word upon word. That's what he said. He said, all you have to do is believe. He said, as the word comes, you accept. And as you accept, what you are accepting is giving quick notices to all undesirable life. That is why I don't believe you can be under this revealed truth and not have a daily change. Amen. It might be slow, it will be steady. Because the reason for us to stay under the SON, which is the revealed world, is for it to bake out all our greenness. Greenness is immaturity. So you cannot stay under a pure revealed world and not truly have a change. Except it is not meant for you. But I believe it is meant for you. Watch upon watch. Baptism upon baptism. The words that I speak to you, they are life and they are spirit. So anytime we hear the truth, we are receiving life. We are receiving the Holy Spirit. Are you catching it? So it was given two signs. And for him to be able to carry those two signs, he was purged. Sorry, my brother, you can say that. He was purged. He was cleansed. Now, what were these two signs to do? These two signs were to attract. But in this attraction, because it was meant for everybody, it will attract the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, the tall, the short, the thin, the fat, the white, the black, the yellow, the red, all kinds. From among all these all kinds that were attracted, there is a particular set of people that God is interested in. But everybody must be brought within a range to hear the voice behind that sign. But this voice will not be meant for everyone. It is only for the seed of God among those who have been attracted. You will see that as we go in this exodus. They left two million strong. But only two people among the old originals entered into the promise. The rest of the severals were the children that were born along the way who grew in the 40 years of wilderness wandering. If there were only if there were old people, they were only Joshua and Caleb. <laughs> Caleb was around 80 or 85. 80 when they entered into the promise. At 85, he claimed all his inheritances. Joshua probably at that age. Because when the Exodus began, as you shall see, the Bible called him a young man. Servant of Moses. But every old people who left Egypt, outside of those young people, okay, some could be around 60, because at Numbers chapter 14 or chapter 13, people who were 20, is it 20 years below? Okay, 20 years below, were the only one who say, we are able to make it. So if you are 20 to 40, the oldest of those who made it will be around 60 or 60 something outside of Joshua and Caleb. But all the older generations who left perished in the wilderness. The two signs attracted all. But very few kept with the voice. The voice will come by the cloud. That is the plan. 
We shall see it. But let's be graduating with him. He was given two signs which is going to steer a mighty revival. I like that song. He said, Lord, I'm going through. I'm going through. He said, many accepted it because it is what? New. But not very many expect to go through. The enduring power to go through cannot be sustained by signs and wonders. Are you listening to me? I repeat again. The enduring power to go through cannot be sustained by signs and wonders. That is why the Bible said where there are gifts, they will come to an end. Signs will cease. Gifts will end. But there is something that has eternal quality. Is that heaven and earth will pass away. But watch. My word. That is a seed gem in the heart of a man. Quickened by the Holy Spirit. You will see that it is only those who are follow, ready to follow the word that came in the cloud of redemption that made it into the promise. Outside of that, everybody perished. The signs you saw today, you read today, that I've shown to you in this last exodus, the one in the hand, the ability to tell the secrets of the heart, they are not permanent signs. The one in the hand heals your body. The one that tells your heart touches your mind. Heal you in the spirit, in your mind. But the one that goes into your soul is the revealed word. That is where you can get permanent healing. Outside of that, friends, we cannot make it. But these signs are good. We heard of them, they attracted us. Amen. And by it, the Gentiles have seen Jesus in their day. Let's just draw the curtain on that. The Gentiles saw what? Where you saw four dead raised to life. In the times of the prophet, we had eight raised to life. Amen. Blind men's eyes were opened. The secrets of us were told. Jesus was back again. So the Gentiles had an opportunity. To do what? To see Jesus. That is the Exodus plan. God bless you. We shall continue from there. I'm so glad brought me out. Yes. Been for Jesus. Oh, where would I be? I'm so glad that the Lord brought me. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that the Lord oh, brought me out. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm so glad. If it had not been for Jesus, oh, where would I be? I'm so glad that the Lord brought me. Are you really glad? I'm so glad that the Lord brought me.
to see the things that we are seeing. Thank you for your redemption plan. Thank you for the third exodus. Thank you for opening our eyes to recognize our day and the message for the same. I pray that these things will never fly over our heads. Oh Lord Jesus, let them walk to throw us to the desperation that is our call for. And Lord, we might realize who we are and what we have brought here for, oh God. That we might not be carried away by the tides of comfort or the things of the world. We might give our hearts and our life only to your service. Bless your people, oh God. Beyond my ability to express these things, may the after speaker expand it in their hearts. Let it be a revelation that God is depending on you and I, Lord. He's got no other hands, He's got no other legs, no other being through whom He will reveal Himself to this generation than our being, O oh God. Help us to be yielded, help us to be surrendered. You've given us our rod in our day. May we never take it in vain. May we never carry it with leprous hands, O oh God. We come for a cleansing. Cleanse us, O oh thou Redeemer. Wash us with the water of your word. That we might go back a better people. With your zeal, with your trust in our heart. Grant it to us, O oh God. That the entrance of your kingdom will be released by the word that has gone forth where we need victory help us Lord Jesus we cry upon you for deliverance that you might break the bondage the hold of the devil even upon our lives where people have been beset by one sin habit or the other may they break loose this morning by the power in your word in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ touch your people Lord every need may you supply if they are be sick, if they are be afflicted, Lord, may they receive your mighty touch. Let there be a turnaround, O oh God. Grant it to your people that they will receive your blessings in every way they have need of, O oh God, by the word that has gone forth. Visit your people mightily. Let your angels go home with them to attend upon their confession. O oh Lord, many hearts are, many are agreeing with your word, Almighty God. I pray, O oh God, that you will take it off from there. And take them from glory to glory. Might unto might, O God. Until we come to that measure of your stature. Let that be our experience. Do it for us, Lord. If there be any heart that is hungering and testing for the Holy Spirit this morning. It's a righteous hunger. It's a blessed are those who thirst it and hunger it after righteousness. They shall be filled. May you fill your people. Fill up these vessels this morning. If there be those who are in the gate of decision, may your hand reach out to them. That they might take that important step for their soul salvation. Grant it, dear Father. Be with the saints, O oh God. May you dismiss us with your blessings and return us back to your presence again. Grant it, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.